guys, it's Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor, and I'm getting ready to repaint this adorable little Dana and Pawpaw's little pumpkin sign. Um, yes, the words are backwards. I may have to flip that for you guys. Um, I painted this for my mom a couple of years ago, and since we've added another grandchild, so I've got to add another baby's name to this. So I thought I'd hop in here on Facebook Live and paint it right along with you guys so you could kind of watch and see how I redo something whenever it needs fixing because we need to add another little pumpkin to the family. Not my kid, but my uh, niece, Waverly, was born. And I'm going to see about flipping my camera this way also so that you guys are not looking at this upside down. So let's see. Let me get that right. Does that look right? Yeah. So y'all say hi as you come in. I'm sorry I wasn't able to send out a notification letting you guys know that I was going live. Um, I wasn't, I was trying to angle the camera so that I could still read your comments. Hi, Debbie. I wasn't able to send out a notification because, um, the people who do the chat bot, they're called mini chat. Something's going on with them right now. They are, um, redoing like the way that they allow us to send out notifications and stuff. And I guess if you send out notifications right now, you could be put in Facebook jail. And so I didn't want that to happen. Hello, Courtney and Jackie and Robin. How are you guys? Okay, um, so I'm not sure if the color I used on this was light mocha or khaki. So I gotta try to figure that out first because I gotta repaint over this area. I'm thinking it's probably light mocha because it, yeah, it looks a little too warm to be khaki. Hi, Anne, you love learning from me all. Thank you. Hey, Maureen. Hi, Tara. Okay, yeah, that looks a little bit more like light mocha. Okay, so this is an apple barrel paint color. It's called light mocha. Um, we're just gonna paint over this bottom part here. I'm gonna try to save the lettering because I loved the way I did it originally and I'm kind of like in fear that I would not be able to make it look like that again. So we're just gonna, this we may have to paint the whole thing though because this is not looking like the exact same color. I probably, knowing me, custom mixed a color and of course it's hard to match that. I wonder if I could match, match it because I don't really like this color either. It looks like foundation, like makeup foundation. I'm gonna do a few drops of the um, Burnt Umber Brown in Wix with this color and kind of make a custom color which is probably what I did originally. But I don't like the way this is looking on here anyways. The color's not right. So who knows, if it doesn't match perfectly, then we will just repaint the whole thing. But this was something I made for my mom um, probably two, three years ago. And we've added another grandbaby to the mix since then so I'm gonna have to add another pumpkin and I thought about just squeezing it in on top of some of these others but then I was kind of like worried that it would be obvious because uh, number one all of the other pumpkins would take up more space and number two I was just worried that um, my painting style has changed a bit since then so I'm like ah the pumpkin might look obviously newer because it wouldn't look like the other pumpkins. <laughs> that color's matching pretty good. I don't know if I can blend it up. We'll see. And it's covering pretty good. It may take a couple of coats. I may have to hook my hair dryer up here in a minute and dry this so we can work quickly on top of this color. I'm going to try to salvage the lettering, but if I can't, I can't. We'll see. What are you guys up to today? Hi, Sharon. Thank you. I am redoing it. <laughs> I probably it probably would have been easier to just completely do a whole new sign. I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave the green vines going up behind the letters for now, and we're gonna see what it looks like if I just do the pumpkins and then blend them in with that. I don't know. We're kind of just going with the flow here, and we're just making it up as we go. And you know what? This may not require a second coat because it's looking pretty good if I just slap just a little bit more of this color on top of that while I'm working. Okay, so we've covered up the pumpkins completely. And that color, I mean, it may be obvious in the video, I don't know, but it really, um, Mandy's finishing up door hanger orders. Good for you, girl. Um, it's really not that obvious in person that, that I kind of mixed the color. So let me dry this and then we'll get back to painting pumpkins. Anybody have any questions? 
Hi, Gail. Hi, Kristen. Well, now that it's dried, you can really tell. <laughs> so, that's all right. We'll just redo the lettering, too. It may not look quite that cute later. Who knows? I should have taken a picture of it so that I could, like, look back at it and see exactly how I did the lettering. Because, I don't know. Like, when I do lettering, it seems to never look the same. Unless I'm looking at a picture and I'm running out of paint. Let me mix some more. Seems to never look the same if I try to um, remember the way I did the lettering and then copy it later. You're cleaning house and waiting for your husband. Oh, you're going to have a little reunion. I always do that too when my husband's been away. I'm like, oh, I need to get the house clean before he gets back. Of course, lately, he's been doing the same thing when I'm gone. When I was gone to Florida this past week, uh, he, like, got the house in tip-top shape, and it looked better than it looks when I'm at home when I got home. So, it's always nice when they clean up. Monica says, are you going to do a video on how to make the ridges for the cute pumpkin from the tutorial? Uh, she's talking about something inside the Painter's Clubhouse. Yes, Monica, I was planning on doing that. Um, I might do that this afternoon if I can fit it in my schedule. So, just depends on if the baby wakes up because the baby the baby who I'm adding the name to this sign for, I babysit her on Wednesdays, so she's here. So, if uh if when I finish this video if she starts crying and ready to eat, then I might not be able to squeeze it in today. I'm kind of working around her schedule. Okay, I'm just trying to blend this out because um I mixed the color and when I had to make more, it's almost like it didn't mix quite right. So I'm just adding it all over the place. That way when it dries, even if it looks streaky, at least it'll look streaky all over and it'll look intentional. Kind of like a streaky background. Okay, let me dry this and then we're gonna paint pumpkins again. <laughs> oh, bless your heart, Courtney, that's rough. Orange color I'm going to use is spiced carrot. I keep holding things upside down and forget that I've got the camera flipped. Hey Dana, is it upside down for you guys or is it okay? I feel like it looks weird. I don't know because it looks right side up to me, but maybe it's not. I'm using a new tripod, so. Okay, um, I'm probably gonna actually pencil my pumpkins on first. That way I get the right number of them because I need six pumpkins. So, um, let me see. We had Nana and Pawpaw's little pumpkins up here. Let me see if I can quickly sketch that out the way I had it so that I get the lettering centered on there. I can kind of see underneath the paint where it was. That helps. Nana, I hate doing the ampersand symbol. And Papa, that's what we call my mom and dad. pause. Let me find where I had the L-I-L. -L. I don't think I can see. Oh, yeah, I see it. Well. 
Sorry, I'm focusing, guys. So I'm not interacting as much right now. I forgot to curl that tail of that S in. This was kind of really cute little like curly font. So I was trying to remember where all the little curls were. That looks close. It's probably not exact, but I'm trying to see where it was before. I think the S was way over here before, but oh well. Hi, Lori. Okay, this is going to be too big. So let's try, I'm going to try a filbert tip brush. This is a size 11. We're just going to see. Oh, I forgot I was going to draw the pumpkins. Let's do a bigger one over here so that it takes up this extra space. Okay, so one there, and then let's do another bigger one over here. And this one could be even like a taller one that has, you know, is skinnier. I think I'm doing the bottom a little too loopy. And then we'll do, uh, let's see, how many more do I need? I need four more. Goodness, we're going to have to layer some of these in front of the others. One, two. We'll put another one kind of in front of this one. It's hard to draw so many pumpkins. And this one will kind of be behind these others. See, I knew if I tried to squeeze one in on that other one, it wouldn't turn out right. Okay, so let's paint them with the pumpkin spice orange. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. You're so sweet. Gabrielle says, I need to learn to freehand. Just keep trying and keep a big, fat pink eraser nearby. Because, um, yeah, you're going to make mistakes, and it's okay. And I don't always stay exactly in my paint lines. I sometimes go rogue and get off the paint lines. This pumpkin spice covers really well. It's going to probably still take two coats, but it's a really vibrant color on this tan background. So I'm just going to lay down a nice color, and then we'll go back and add a little bit of shading in a moment when we do the second coat. Just want to get a background color on there and cover up my pencil lines. Sorry, it's been a while since I've been on Facebook Live. I was gone to Florida uh, most of last week on a girls' trip. And we just hung out and stuffed our bellies with junk food and laid on the beach for three days. <laughs> and it was so nice. But I'm back now. Hi, Betty. How are you? You're going live at three. Glad you caught me. Gabrielle, I'm so, it's so cute. Gonna wait to a painting class next month. Yay, that sounds like fun. Can you believe that we are already like more than halfway through September? I feel like I just blinked and now we're nearly to October. Like what happened? School just started, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. We're gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and um, paint like the little stems. And I'm painting those a burnt umber brown. It's also an apple barrel paint color. Betty says I have to do my lettering with a silhouette, so I can't do this. Um, Betty, that is totally fine, and, you know, one of these days, if you've got time to practice some more, you may want to learn how to do the hand lettering, but, you know, some people would just prefer to do it with the silhouette, and that's fine, too. You do it however you want to do it. Okay, we've got the stems. Let's go ahead and pencil our lettering on, or do our lettering with the brush. Let's see. 
Let me find a brush that's skinny enough. Um, what size are these? That one's a two. I think I want the three if I can find it. I've got too many brushes. Said no one ever. <laughs> okay, this is a filbert tip size three. So you can see the about the size on my finger there. Hi, Tony. You're painting your kitchen island. What color? Are you painting like over wood? Or are you painting over another color? It's been so long since I painted this one that I'm like, well, how did I do that exactly? I gotta remind myself. And it's funny because back then I didn't think I was good at hand lettering and um, I was so proud of how that one turned out. And now I'm kind of like, can I copy it exactly? Because I really liked the way it looked. We shall see. I don't think my mom's going to care either way. She'll probably like it no matter what it looks like. Moms are that way. Oh, pumpkin patch themed birthday. Are you going to paint the baby's booty orange like a pumpkin? <laughs> Ooh, turquoise. That sounds nice, Tony. Did I freehand the letters? I penciled them out first, and now I'm just going over them with a paintbrush. These little things that I'm putting on the ends of the letters, the little lines, those are called serifs. So if you're looking for like fonts and you want a font with serifs, then make sure that you like search for serif font. If it's a font without serifs, it would be called sans, S-A-N-S, -S, sans serif which means without serifs. This isn't necessarily a font. This is just cute lettering. And I just tried to, anytime it was like a letter that had, that was like a lowercase letter where it curved around like an A or a P, I just did like a little curly. Instead of connecting it perfectly, I just curled it inward. If she'll let you. Oh, man, that'll be so cute. This hangs in my mom's garage next to her door where everybody comes in the house. And she went to get it out this year. And, of course, we had added a granddaughter to the family. So it was time to add another pumpkin. I'm trying not to get my arm in it, but I'm failing miserably. I've got it all up my arm. The eye has a little swirl curly too, as the dot. Oops, I just got my arm in it. Let me touch this up. My favorite way to touch up things is to just dip my finger in the paint and then just dab on the spot like you're putting on concealer. <laughs> my tip of the day. You guys are awfully quiet. You're usually commenting more than this. You guys must be like in a trance watching me paint letters. For those of you that maybe aren't in the Painters Clubhouse group, I wanted to let you know that um, it's not officially reopening until, hang on, we're fixing to do some shading on these pumpkins. It's not gonna officially reopen until 2019. 
but we may have like a little secret uh, invitation sent out to people on the wait list around the week of Black Friday. Um, thank you, Gabby. Uh, and so if you want to get that secret invitation sent to you by email, make sure and go to paintersclubhouse.com and get on the wait list. Okay, Dana says, Tamara, what would you think about using matte black acrylic as a chalkboard paint? You know, Dana, I don't know. I don't know if that would work. Um, let me get another brown. I'm going to use this nutmeg brown to kind of shade these pumpkins. Um, I'm not sure if that would work, Dana. I've never used black, just regular matte black paint as a chalkboard paint. I would think that you could probably write on it just fine, but being able to erase it might be difficult. Okay, I'm dipping my brush in both the uh, spiced carrot and the nutmeg. And I'm just curving my brush with the curve of the pumpkin to get that shaded look. And then I'm going to curve it this way so that that's... And if you feel like you got too much, just dip back in that orange and coat your brush again. And I might even do some... Um, antique white kind of as a, a highlight color. We dip just a little bit of that and put it right here in the middle and on the outside and then get put a little bit more over here and then get this carrot spice again and go right back over it with the carrot spice. But just keep layering it with your brush until you like the way, like how it looks. And I'm getting some more brown and shading the edges. Do you mean add the line to the S on the pumpkins? Um, I'm going to do that, Sharon. I'm not sure what you're asking. But, yeah, I'm going to be doing that here at the end. I'm going to go back and add the, um, shade, the highlights on the letters. So, look how much better that pumpkin looks than the other ones. Okay. Um, and it always helps if you're shading to make sure that the background color is wet. So, um, this one will be a little harder just because it's kind of behind that other pumpkin right there. So, I'm going to try to still shade the best I can because I can't kind of swirl behind that. There we go. Thank you, Billy. This one's tricky too because it goes behind this one. In hindsight, it probably would be easier to shade the pumpkins that are in back first and then go over with the pumpkins that are on top. Got too much white. Get some more brown. And some more orange. Sometimes I get to muddle in the paint colors together so much that it's hard to keep the colors the way you want them. What are the colors I'm using to highlight again? Gabrielle, I'm using Carrot Spice, Antique White, and Nutmeg Brown. That are Those are the three colors I'm currently using to do these pumpkins. Carrot Spice, Antique White, and Nutmeg Brown. I kind of think of it too a little bit like um, when you're doing contouring with your makeup. Like lay all the colors on there. Then get just a little bit of your base color, that orange, and kind of shade it on. Sometimes that works pretty good, and sometimes it don't. You just got to keep playing with it till you like it. And sometimes I shade all that on, then I'm like, ah, eh, it's not dark enough, so I go back and get some more brown. Shading, I would have to say, is probably one of the things that I struggle with the most when it comes to painting door hangers. I'm not super confident doing it. And it may just be because I'm like, I don't know where to quit. I just can't. I just keep slapping paint on there, and I don't know where to quit. So 
so I need to go back and get some I need to get some more orange and I just keep shading it on there and then go back and add the brown last maybe I struggle with it sometimes may not look like it when you're watching me on here but the OCD in me is like ah it's not right Um, Kayla says, I think Sharon means the S on the pumpkins doesn't have a line at the top part of the S in Papa's. S in pumpkin. Ah, you're right. It doesn't. Thank you for noticing that. I usually don't notice that stuff till I'm completely done. And then I'm like, crap. <laughs> Thank you. Totally didn't notice that. Get a little highlight. Seems like every time I start highlighting, then I'm like, eh, I need more brown. Oop, getting carried away there. Okay, that looks pretty decent. Thank you, Margie. Apostrophe on pawpaws. <laughs> I did it with a pencil, but I didn't do it with paint. Thank you. Somebody else is noticing. <laughs> I get carried away and forget what I'm doing. Ooh, I should have blotted that off on a paper towel. Because it's a little bit watery. Soak up that water. Okay, pumpkins are done with the orange, so let's go um, back and add some green um, vines and stuff. Um, this is a round tip brush, size number three. I'm gonna try that one. And this color is called palm leaf. It's also apple barrel. I've been doing a lot of deco art paint lately, but today I'm just using a bunch of old apple barrel colors. And my, uh, oh, <laughs> I just now saw what Marissa said. Thank you. Let's just add a couple of cute leaves first, and then we'll go back and add vines. two to a couple of these just so that they don't all look too uniform okay and then the vines I just get plenty of paint on my brush and swirl and if I if it looks like it trails off I may mix a tad bit of burnt umber in this too into my green I kind of swirl it in I'm not mixing it perfectly I'm kind of marbling it in and it kind of creates more of a natural looking green vine. And so then you can just use these vines to fill the boring spaces. So if there's, you know, space in between here, you can just fill that in by adding a vine. And it kind of makes them look like they're all still connected on the vine. And swirl it on up here as well. And then I could do a little bit up there. Um, I want some coming down to look like these two are kind of connected. Okay, I think that's good. Hello, Elaine. Okay, let's go back and add the names now. And I'm gonna use probably a smaller, even smaller filbert tip brush because I want these names to really fit. We don't have really, like not all of our kids have short names. Um, so 
we need skinnier brushes. I thought I had a size one in here, but some of my brushes are really tall and some of them are really short. Here it is. Okay, so this is a filbert tip size one and it's much more narrow than the others. Okay, and I'm just gonna use the same um, burnt umber brown and just start putting names on these. So, um, I'm trying to think if I'm gonna put them in child order. I don't think I am. These little pumpkins, I should probably put the shorter names on. So let's put Brett on this one because he's got a shorter name. Brett. And then, um, let me think, Travis, Carter, Charlie, they're all about the same length. I'll put Travis, um, we'll put Travis right here. I need to remember to add my little serifs. I don't always add them to the bottoms of the T. Or the tops of the eyes. It doesn't really matter how you add them, just so long as you're like consistent with it. If you do it the same way on every, every S or every T or whatever. Okay, this will be, um, let's do Brooks down here. And technically part of this is gonna go over onto the next pumpkin or but it's okay. And for my O's, they kind of swirl into each other as well. Like they're not a perfect O. And then we've got Ch Carter, Charlie, and Waverly. So let's just do the girls on the outside. How about that? We'll do Waverly over here since her name is probably the longest. Let's see, I did it on that one. I gotta go back and add serifs on all of these A's too, because I did it on a couple of the ones down at the bottom and I did it on those. <laughs> Hi, Joni. Hi, Sandra. Thank you. Wave. I gotta make sure not misspell her name. I've learned my lesson to not talk while I'm spelling names. Because I always misspell them. Whew, that was a long name, Waverly. Okay, and then we'll move down here and do Charlie on this end. We got another fly in here. I swear they're attracted to the smell of this paint. Somebody else in my painter's clubhouse said that the other day. They said flies started coming in whenever they got the paint out. It's kind of weird. Charlie, and then Carter goes here. So all the boys are in the middle and the girls are on the end. Both my brother and I had two boys and then a girl. Kind of funny how that works. Okay. Carol said, are you in your new craft room yet? Uh, Mary, I'm using burnt umber. I'm um, sorry, that's upside down. Um, Carol, nope, not yet. Um, we are still getting our garage straightened out there. Um, they just finished doing like the floor of the attic this past 
week and so it's really coming along nicely and then um, they're supposed to start like the electrician is coming on Monday and then um, they'll start siding and stuff like that next week okay so this is a round tip brush size one and I've just got a little bit of antique white on here and I'm gonna kind of try to use a really light hand and really lightly um, brush this on all of the areas that accent the shapes of these letters so I'm not doing the whole letter and I'm trying to like not dip after every single letter because I kind of like that scratchy brushed look instead of a perfect highlight I like I like it when it almost runs out of paint and then it fades away So hopefully gravity will just continue to pull the paint down to the end of the brushes and I won't have to redip this because I kind of like the way it looks when it's almost about to run out of paint. Oh, I'm gonna have to redip. Oh, that's too much. Let me scrape some off. Leslie said, are you seeing my comments? I wanted you to know I made it. Hi, Leslie. No, I, I probably wasn't looking up. I have to be kind of like stop painting and look up to read y'all's comments. So I keep trying to do that periodically. And uh, it's hard to do when you're painting letters. You really have to do this with like a feather light touch or you get way too much. Okay. Oh, and I was doing, gonna do it on the names down here as well. It just makes them pop. So I'm kind of dipping my brush and then I'm kind of scraping the brush on the edge of my egg carton to get the excess paint off so that it's just really light. I forgot the little line at the top of the L on Waverly. Oh, yes I did. I'll go back and do that in a minute. I hear the baby starting to stir around. I may have to end this and go see about her. I'm gonna do a little bit on the stems as well. It's like squirrel. I keep seeing things I wanna add and do. Have to work quickly. The baby's waking up. I think it's about time for a bottle. This probably would be easier if I'd waited for the paint to dry some of it's not sticking as well with the paint wet. All right, let me go back and fix that one little spot and then we'll call it a day because I gotta go feed the baby. So an L on top of that L there. All right, well thank you guys for hopping on here and whoa, I'm upside down you guys. <laughs> oh, that's nuts. And watching with me, we just finished doing this cute little pumpkin sign, Nan and Papa's little pumpkins, and there's uh, Charlie, Brett, Carter, Travis, Brooks, and Waverly. Hopefully I misspelled every I spelled everybody's name correctly. All right, well, I will see you guys again next time. Thank you for watching, and um, I'll catch you later. Bye.